everybody, thanks for joining us today. This is May 12th. Uh, special May 12th Sunday because today is Mother's Day. We want to send a special Sabbath School vlog. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers who are part of the vlog and a part of our lives. Uh, I want to send a special Mother's Day to my mom who happens to be the best mom in the world. And also to uh, my wife, who's a mother, and my mother-in-law. So uh, God bless you all. You guys have a special ministry in having to put up with us. Uh, today's lesson uh, is going to be just kind of joining the introduction to lesson number seven and Sunday's lesson. Uh, yesterday, <coughs> uh, this, this last couple days, been having a hard time with the... Um, with the software that we're rendering with, but thank goodness there was a update and all of the little uh, bugs were fixed. So hopefully we'll have smooth sailing for the next forever. Okay. This uh, week's lesson is entitled God's Special People. What does it mean to be a part of the people of God? And this is the study of the book of Micah. Which is one of those little books that, uh, you know, we don't always have the opportunity to study. So, it's again, not that big of a book. Uh, go ahead and begin your studying so that our uh, feedback and our commentary can be rich. The memory text again is Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Micah is another minor prophet who is preaching now towards the tail, real tail end of the history of the uh, northern kingdom and the punishment of the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. Micah means uh, who is like God in a question form which is very close to uh, the name Michael, which means who is like God in a statement form, like who is like God, you know? Wow, <laughs> Micah is the question, who is like God? Uh, and this is pretty much the, the you know, the, the feel and the theme again of Micah is the same as all the minor prophets. There's really an intense sense of judgment in the air and it causes a lot of feelings to be revealed and um, which kind of takes us right into Sunday's lesson which is entitled Agony of the Prophet's Heart. Uh, the book of Micah just jumps right into uh, the suffering, uh, not the suffering, but the judgments of God on Judah and in Samaria, the northern kingdom. And it's, it, I mean, you read it, it even, it just sounds so severe. I mean, it is intense. So much so that the prophet has to respond on how this is affecting him because not like Jonah who had to go preach to a pagan nation, people that he didn't like, uh, Micah is preaching to his own people. And his own people, unlike the Ninevites, are not listening. You know, God sent one prophet to Nineveh and they repented. God sent multiple prophets to Jerusalem, multiple prophets to Samaria, and nobody is paying attention. So I want you to notice how the prophet responds. And this takes us to the main idea of this lesson. We'll go ahead and read Micah chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Therefore I will wail and howl, I will go stripped and naked, I will make a wailing like the jackals, and a mourning like the ostriches. For her wounds are incurable, for it has come to Judah, it has come to, my, to the gate of my people, to Jerusalem. Here... 
uh, the prophet is wailing and he's just trying to describe his pain because the judgment of God has come to the gates of his people. And this is not new. Every prophet, I mean, you think of Jeremiah, the weeping uh, prophet, they all were affected by the ministries that they had. But I just want to take a moment before we move on to examples of sufferings uh, by prophets. Take the time to understand that prophets always reflect, in one way or another, the heart of God. And when you hear Micah, I mean really, it's a heartfelt cry. He says, now I will wail and howl for, for destruction has come to Jerusalem and to Samaria, he is just reflecting the heart of God. God, had, is, God is the one who's been sending the prophets. God has been the one that's been sending the warnings. He's the one that declares that I am not pleased with the death of the wicked, so repent and choose life. But now, judgment day has come. And as you see the reaction of the prophet, you can see the reaction of God with wailings and howlings. He says, I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the jackals and a mourning like the ostrich. Okay? This is what God's position is like. God is not pleased with judgment. It's why he hasn't come back yet. He's giving us as much time as possible. But when the day comes, this is why I always say, hell will be hell for God. Because he's the one that's worked the hardest to save his, like a fireman, to save people from judgment. But the day will come where he will have to respect our decisions. Um, the lesson really focuses on the sufferings of the prophets as part of the ministry of serving the Lord. I mean, we've gone through quite a few examples as we've studied uh, the minor prophets. Uh, we can think way back with Abraham when he was asked to sacrifice his son. We can think of Moses and the struggles that he had with Israel, being stoned, you know, being accused every day of his life, causing him to be angry. Uh, we can think about Hosea that had to marry an adulterous wife. We think of Paul who was stoned to death and then brought back to life just to be beaten again. Uh, suffering is just a part of the ministry of being, the life of being a Christian. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds pretty morbid. Why would I want to be a Christian if it involves suffering? Uh, the truth of the matter is, Christian or non-Christian, we all suffer in this world. It's a part of our experience. Mothers can testify. Being a mother costs a lot. Takes a toll. Uh, there is a horrible, painful experience that I cannot understand because I'm a man. I'm told I will never know what it's like. But women do. And yet, they keep on having babies. Why? Because it's worth it. Same idea with Christianity. There's a suffering that is involved, but unlike the suffering we have in the world, our suffering is redemptive. Uh, I would like to read a couple verses that the lesson brings out. <clears throat> Found in uh, Second Peter, uh, actually First Peter, chapter four, verses fourteen through sixteen, and it reads. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. God has called us to suffer, but our sufferings, like when Peter says in another part uh, of his book, 
Uh, count it all joy when you suffer diverse trials and tribulations because it will work out the perfecting of your, of your patience. Uh, there is a redemptive work in suffering. Christ says, if you do not bear your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of me. And when we think about the cross, uh, which is the epitome of Christ's sufferings, you find that Christ did not suffer because of what he did, but because of what others were doing. It was the people he was ministering for that cost him the most grief, just like Moses' experience. That's the cross that he wants us to bear. Not the sufferings that are brought upon us by our own bad decisions, like uh, 1 Peter just said, but the suffering that comes from serving others and following Christ. For our love for God and our love for others, whatever we suffer will be counted and uh, witnessed by God in heaven. And it produces a divinity uh, resemblance. We, become, we, we start to look like God and His image becomes recreated in our lives. Um, if you ask any mother today... And when they're holding the little baby in their arms, like my cousin Erica, who just gave birth, congratulations. Uh, if you asked her, as she's holding her little baby, was it worth it? Those nine months of body beatings, transformation, ailments, was it worth it? The hours of labor, of intense pain? Because she does it all uh, non-epidural. She does it non-epidural, so if anyone can answer this question, it's her. And I'm sure, like every other mother, she'll say, it is worth it. It is definitely worth it. When we uh, make it to heaven, and we think back on all the things that we went through for the name of Christ, we will say, heaven is cheap enough. And our only regret would be not being able to do more. So, I challenge you today... Make the most of today. Whatever life throws you, whatever God asks you, do it with all of your heart and all of your strength. And don't run away from the possibility of rejection or pain. Uh, it's like my friend Annabelle says, the uh, beach body trainer, no pain, no gain. So I leave you with that thought. God bless you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day, wonderful Sunday, and I will see you all tomorrow. God bless you.